this question over here uh, deals with combustion analysis. And the question basically wants, it, say, it states that which equation correctly represents the balanced equation for the complete combustion of a hydrocarbon with the formula CXHY. And you're given four options. Now, uh, when you have a hydrocarbon, so let's uh, discuss this. Whenever a hydrocarbon completely combusts and he's given us the formula of uh, the hydrocarbon, which is an unknown hydrocarbon. So the formula that's given is CXHY. What we don't know is the amount of carbon atoms or the amount of hydrogen atoms in in the formula. So they are X carbons and they are Y hydrogens. But what we know is that whenever a, a hydrocarbon combusts or reacts, it reacts with O2 and it ends up producing two things. One is CO2 and the other thing is water. So that's, that's complete combustion. Now... What we need to do is we need to write a balanced equation, but in terms of X and Y. So what I, what I would do is, to explain this fur further, let's think of uh, X and Y as numbers. What we can come up with, come up with any hydrocarbon, let's say, let's call that C3H8. A hydrocarbon having three carbons and eight hydrogens. Or let's come up with another hydrocarbon, uh, C2H4. So let's try and write their equation and try and figure out how the equation would be balanced in terms of X and Y. So if I write these equations, C3H8, it reacts with O2 and it produces CO2 and H2O. So all hydrocarbons, the products are pretty much the same. We're talking about complete combustion, so carbon dioxide would be produced. The second also reacts in the same way and it produces CO2 and H2O. Now the first thing that you would notice is if you look there are three carbons over here so how many CO2s should you have? To balance this equation there should be three CO2s. Now your carbons are balanced. If there are two carbons over here the amount of carbon dioxide would be two. Now your carbon is balanced. So using the same if there are X carbons so how many carbon dioxide molecules should you have? They should be X carbon dioxide molecules only then would the carbons be balanced so we have what we have done is we have basically balanced the number of carbons so the number of carbons that you have in the formula that's the number of carbon dioxide you're going to have in the reaction if you have two carbons you have two carbon dioxides being produced if you have three carbons there are three carbon dioxides being produced if you have x carbons there would be x carbon dioxide molecules that would be produced now let's focus on the hydrogen now because the carbon is already balanced. So in this uh, equation, in this example equation, you have eight hydrogens. So how many water molecules would balance the number of hydrogen atoms? So uh, the number of H2O molecules that you would need are four. Because if you have eight hydrogens, each water molecule has two hydrogens. So four water molecules would also have a total of eight hydrogens. If you have four hydrogens, then the amount of water molecules would be 2. Now one thing that you would notice is that the number of hydrogen that you have over here, the number of water molecules is half of that. If you have 8 hydrogens, you have 4 water molecules. If you have 4 hydrogens, you have 2 water molecules. Now if you have Y hydrogens, you're going to have Y by 2 water molecules. Because the number of hydrogens that you have over here, the number of water molecules is half that number. The number of hydrogens that you had over here, the number of water molecules to balance the equation was half that number. So if you have Y hydrogens, the number of water molecules is going to be Y by 2. Now the last and the trickier part is to somehow balance the oxygen in terms of X and Y. So coming back to our example equation. I'm going to try and balance the oxygen molecules. Uh, what number should go over here to balance the oxygen molecules? Now, if you have three CO2s, that would mean you have three O2 molecules. Three CO2s contain three O2 molecules. But if you have four H2O, four H2O contain four oxygens, and that would be equal to two O2 molecules. So, if I want to balance the oxygen molecules uh, or oxygen atoms in this equation, uh, three CO2s contain three O2 molecules, four H2Os contain four oxygens, that would be equal to two O2 molecules. So the total number of oxygen mo uh, molecules 
that I need over here, that would be 5. In that way, the equation would be balanced. 5O2 molecules means there are a total of 10 oxygens. There are 6 oxygens over here in 3 CO2 molecules and 4 oxygens in this, so that's a total of 10. So we can focus on this equation again uh, and do the same thing. You have 2 CO2 molecules. That would be equivalent to 2 O2 molecules. So that's equal to 2 O2 molecules. And we have 2 H2O molecules. And 2 H2O molecules would be equivalent to just 1 O2 molecule. Because 2 H2O molecule, molecules contain, they contain 2 oxygen atoms and that would be equivalent to 1 O2 molecule. So the amount of O2 molecules that I need over here is 2 O2 plus 1, 1 O2, that's a total of 3 O2. So 3 O2 molecules would mean there are 6 oxygens on the left hand side, there are 4 over here and there are 2 over here. So that's a total of 6 oxygens. So that's how you're going to balance oxygen in normal equation. Now if you look at the reaction over here, you have X CO2 molecules. Now if you had 3 CO2 molecules, that would be equivalent to 3 O2 molecules. If you had 2 CO2 molecules, that would be equivalent to 2 O2 molecules. So if you have X CO2 molecules, then those X CO2 molecules would be equivalent to X O2 molecules. And let's look over here. If you had 4 H2O molecules, that would be equivalent to 2 O2 molecules. If you had 2 H2O molecules, that would be equal to 1 O2 molecule. So 4 H2O molecules should be equivalent to 2. So that's half. So if you have Y H2O molecules, that would be equivalent to Y by 4 into O2 molecules. So at the end of the day, the total number of oxygen molecules that should be present over here is XCO2 means you have XO2 molecules, Y by 2 H2O means uh, you have Y by 4 O2 molecules. So the total number of O2 molecules that should be put over here is going to be X plus Y by 4. That would balance the number of O2 molecules. So the only tricky part is the oxygen part. So again, very carefully try and understand this. 3CO2 contains, they obviously contain 3O2 molecules. So to balance 3CO2, you need 3O2 molecules on the other side. But if you have 4H2O, the amount of O2 molecules that should be put on the other side, 4H2O contain 4 oxygen, so that's equivalent to 2O2 molecules. So that would be half of that. So the amount of water that you have, the amount of O2 molecules on the other side should be half of that. Two water molecules would be equivalent to containing one O2 molecule. Because two water molecules have two oxygens, so on the other side, if you want to balance the equation, you should keep one O2. That would be equivalent to two oxygens. So if you have Y by 2 H2O molecules, the number of O2 molecules on the other side should be Y by 4 O2 molecules. So at the end of the day, your reaction, your balanced equation in terms of X and Y is, if you have CH6HY uh, hydrocarbon, X CO2 molecules are produced, Y by 2 H2O molecules are produced, and the amount of oxygen that would be used up is X plus Y by 4. So look for the option in the equation, the four options that are given, and the answer that uh, perfectly matches this equation is uh, CXHY, X plus Y by 4 O2, X CO2, and uh, Y by 2 H2O, so that would be D. D is the option that perfectly matches with the balanced equation that we've formed over here.